Hi everyone, I'm here on my local park lake and uh, believe it or not, it's mid-December at the moment. It's still really mild, especially for December. Um, still catching a few carp, so that's all good. But this video isn't about this park lake at all. Um, you may remember if you watch this channel that uh, a few years ago I went to Leesers Park in Newcastle where I used to live uh, to try and catch a carp from there, which was a, a very successful little mission. And I thought uh, this summer I'd try and repeat the feat. Uh, except this time I was going to go back to Banbury in Oxfordshire as I'd lived there from the age of nine till 21. Uh, and I'd done a lot of fishing on the Oxford Canal and seen quite a few carp there, but never really managed to catch any successfully. Um, so as I said, in August, I went back to Banbury and I thought I'd try and tackle the canal and that's what this video is all about. So hope you enjoy it guys. My first stop was Castaway Tackle on the Warwick Road, somewhere I'd end up most weekends as a youngster. I picked up some bronze maggots with the plan being to head to one of my old spots on the river and then the canal. First I decided to tackle the river, at a spot that I remembered as being truly magical. At least it was about 25 years ago and I wasn't remotely prepared for what I saw. It was totally overgrown, hardly any water and certainly no fish. Well, uh, we're not off to the best of starts. Um, I've just been to the tackle shop in Banbury uh, and I did ask about one of my favorite spots from 25, 30 years ago, which was the place that I've just been to. Uh, we used to refer to it locally as Pikers Paradise because there was so many pike in there. There was all sorts of other species. You had roach, bream. Uh, me and my mate, Andy, we even saw a guy pulling out a massive carp from there one day. Um, I've just been there and it's gone. There's just, there's just nothing left. Just bit of water. It's just completely devoid of life. It's overgrown. I, I just can't believe it's got like that. Um, I mean, we used to spend so much time down there and... I don't know, I, do, I, I don't know how it... people can let it get like that, you know, where's... where's the local angling clubs? I, I've got no photos of it, so it's... it's kind of consigned to memory, really. Um, I've. I've got some good memories of it, caught, caught my first ever pike from there. But that that's, that's as far as it's going to go now. I'm going to stop filming and uh, collect my thoughts for a minute and then I'm going to head down to the canal and hopefully that'll be a bit better. I picked myself up and headed to my old favourite spot on the canal, which was behind a former factory. Although it looked pretty much the same, in reality it really wasn't. Well, I've come down to the canal now, to one of my old favourite spots, for a bit of float fishing, and uh, I don't know if things have gone from bad to worse really after the river. I mean, for all intents and purposes, it looks the same down here. I've been fishing for about an hour now just with like bronze maggots like I used to do in the margins and can't get a touch. I mean, I don't know whether that's because there's no fish here or the amount of boat traffic. There was boat traffic before, which from what I can remember it, it didn't affect it 
that much so who knows I'm going to plod on for a little while and see if I can get any bites and um, if that doesn't work there's one other place I can try which I know definitely won't be affected by boat traffic so I might give that a blast but I'll I'll persevere for a little while and just see how it goes well, I've persevered for a little while but still nothing not seeing any signs of any fish I remember in this spot about 30 years ago or the late 80s you could you could come down here and just fish as I'm doing now with like a uh, maggot on the float catch about 20 30 fish in a few hours roach gudgeon perch the odd dace but it's just nothing at the moment I think uh, I kind of set myself a bit of a a difficult target here at the start of this mission uh, my mission is to catch a canal carp I had seen them in this area many years ago and obviously really wanted to catch one then but didn't really know how how to go about it nowadays I do know how to go about it but it just doesn't seem to be any fish here so I think uh, might be setting myself up to fail slightly here just need something to give me a bit of a lift even if it's only just catching a few bits on the float but can't even seem to do that at the moment so I'm gonna head to another spot if I can get to it uh, where I know I won't be affected by boat traffic and hopefully if there is a few fish there I might be able to get amongst them so um, I'm gonna pack up from this spot and then give it a go on the next one In desperation I crossed the road and headed to what can only be described as a novelty spot from my childhood. My friends and I referred to it as the backstream. Tiny as it was, we always managed to catch a few fish from there. I found it a bit ridiculous that I was having to fish here to get a bite, but at least this time it worked, and I was more than delighted to catch a few small perch and roach. <laughs> After stopping off for some food and a quick phone call to local expert Matt Perring, I was off in pursuit of the real prize, an Oxford Canal carp. Matt had shared some info about a spot where he'd been having plenty of success, which was opposite a new marina. Okay, well I'm now set up in the swim that I'm going to fish for tonight. Um, basically I, I followed a bit of an insider tip and I've come up to this marina that's been here for about three years I think now, as it's fairly new. Um, but as soon as I got here, I noticed that there's this little alcove cut into the bushes, which is an ideal spot to just about pitch a brolly, which I've done here, because um, it looks like people are obviously carp fishing it, um, and particularly doing overnighters. I can see in the marina at the moment, there's a fair few fish cruising around. Uh, it's blisteringly hot though. I wouldn't be surprised if it's got up near 30 today, so that might kill things off maybe un until tonight and until it cools down a little bit. I'm waiting for uh, a friend of mine Matt to arrive. Uh, he's the guy that's been giving me a few insider bits of info. Um, so he should be here soon and hopefully we're going to have some success. I mean anything's better than, than what's been happening earlier today. I was getting uh, quite despondent and even just catching a few of those tiddlers out that little back stream has just got my spirits up a bit. So I'm uh, looking forward to tonight and, and seeing what's going to happen. At dusk I was joined by Matt and a few local anglers who came to wish me well. And once darkness had set in all was quiet and I drifted off nervously to sleep. During the night disaster had struck. About two o'clock in the morning I'd hit into an Oxford Canal carp, but 
during the battle, the line had become stuck around the entrance to the marina and the fish managed to shed the hook. Rather than wait it out until dusk the following night, I decided to head over to the canal's feeder reservoir, Classicut. At 21 acres in size, it was perhaps a more formidable body of water, but as a well-established match venue, I was confident of nicking a few bites from here. Okay, I'm here and set up at Classicut Reservoir now. It's um, about five, 10 minutes drive from where I was on the canal. Um, it's actually a feeder reservoir for the Oxford Canal, so it's run by the River and Canals Trust. And as you can see, it's quite an expansive piece of water. Um, as it is a reservoir, it is very deep in certain places, over 25 foot. Uh, the area where I'm fishing, which is one of the pegs that you're allowed to night fish on, I've got about uh, sort of 12 to 15 foot in front of me and uh, it, it hasn't been easy at all. Uh, I mean, it's quite a well-stocked venue, but um, it's been very, very hot again today. Um, I started fishing around midday and it's taken me a good three, four hours to get a bite. Uh, I finally had a, a, a small carp on a zig uh, of about 10 foot with a, a trimmed down white pineapple and squid pop-up. And boy, was I glad to see it. I've, I don't think I've ever been that happy to see a small fish uh, like that before because this whole trip's just been such a struggle really starting to rue losing that fish on the canal last night but not a lot I can do about that now uh, needless to say that I do have unfinished business there so I think uh, I think it's safe to say I'll definitely be going back to fish that again um, I'm hoping for a bit of a, a bumper night tonight once the temperature cools down they might get their heads down because uh, I've put quite a bit of bait out there so we'll see what happens. Later that evening I was joined by an old friend from school who I hadn't seen in nearly 20 years and he brought over his two young children to experience a bit of the magic of fishing. Right, well, I've never, I don't think I've ever worked so hard to catch a small fish and uh, I'm very pleased to be joined by my good mate from school Scott's youngsters here we've got Lucia and Louie here is this the first carp you've seen? Yeah. Yeah? What do you reckon? It's big. Yeah, they, they, it's not a bad size, is it? Caught this one off of the top and it went like a rocket. The rod nearly went in the water. Yeah, the rod nearly went in the water. That was a shock. An accident avoided. <laughs> Still got the night to come, so we're going to pop this one back, maybe see if I can get another one off, whoop, off the top before, before dusk. How's this for a wake up call? A mint common just shy of 21 pound. Again caught from the margins, just with a little scattering of bait, just kept it really simple. And the action was pretty much constant through the night. I'm gonna get this beauty back. Well, I'm doing this part from bed now because I'm just too tired to move. I had a pretty sleepless night with almost constant action. And uh, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning now and it's kind of tailed off and I'm not, not too upset about that because uh, it was getting ridiculous at one stage with uh, even a double run a few hours ago. Uh, two 20 pound fish which I'm really delighted with especially considering the way the session w was going I thought it was going to be a, a bit of a failure all round but um, you know the last 12 hours or so on here really saved that really turned it around and all the action has just come from the margins pretty much even on a big water like this the carp just love the margins and this does get match fished quite a lot so inevitably what will happen is when the match guys leave they'll dump their bait in the edge carp move in when they've gone mop it all up um, 
so they used to find in quite a bit of food in the edge and that that's all I was doing just dropping it in handful of bait sometimes it was just taking about 10 15 minutes and it was off uh, I'm gonna try and get myself together give it about another hour or so and then uh, start packing up and drive home cheers for watching there'll be a sequel to this though as uh, there is definitely unfinished business on that canal see ya right now I said it was going to be the end of the video a minute ago but there's one more little thing I need to do which is a quick dedication now yesterday evening when I was fishing with my mate Scott and his kids he said to me Mike you must have a very understanding wife to be able to do all of this and the truth is yes I do so I would like to dedicate this video to my wife Amanda uh, for all the support that you show me through my fishing exploits and on this particular trip I was getting very despondent at various times and she said to me, come on, pull your finger out, keep going and catch some fish. And in the end, the mission was a success. So thank you for the motivation and all the support you give me. Love you loads. Mwah. And I'm going to buy some flowers now.